Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I am bringing you guys a breakdown of the Green Bay Packers backfield for the 2021 fantasy football season. And more specifically, we are going to go in depth on AJ Dillon and what I feel like will be a tremendous campaign in the 2021 fantasy football season. Before I get into this breakdown, if you guys do end up enjoying at any point throughout this video, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button as well as hitting that like button. It helps me out a whole ton. I make these videos for free for you guys, so all you got to do is please hit that like button. It really helps me out a whole ton because then more people can watch the videos and more people can have a great time every single day when I post these videos. So please make sure that you guys can do that. I would really appreciate it. So obviously, yesterday, was the franchise tag deadline in the NFL at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Aaron Jones was not franchise tagged by the Green Bay Packers. To me, it seemed like the Packers were getting more out of favor with Aaron Jones. But I was like, hey, maybe they'll end up franchise tagging him, right? Bring him back for one more year, one more run with Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones to build a team that is very strong, obviously, by using the franchise tag and not having to have Aaron Jones on the books for four or five years. But obviously, they elected to do the opposite, and they did not end up franchise tagging him. And I talked about it a little bit in that video when I was talking about it, kind of how I felt about the Green Bay Packers backfield. But that's a three-minute video that is mostly centered upon where I felt like Aaron Jones was going to end up playing in 2021. If you guys have an idea that's better than mine, hopefully he's a Miami Dolphin because I like the Dolphins. That is my guess. But obviously, there's a bunch of different teams that people were discussing in the comments section. So... Now we got the backfield that is A.J. Dillon and a bunch of scrubs based on who's signed to the team right now. They also have Jamal Williams, who is currently a UFA, and with them not bringing back Aaron Jones, I feel as though that means that Williams will be getting a, not a big bag, obviously, to sign back with the team, but he'll get a medium-sized bag to stay with the team and be a one-two punch system in Green Bay, obviously a dual-headed backfield type of situation. I'm talking about how last season, we had Devin Singletary and Zach Moss, the one-two that was kind of brutal, right? We kind of didn't know what to do during the whole season, unless one of them was obviously hurt, because then the other one was going to be getting carries. But I think we're going to see this be more of one of those like we saw in Indianapolis last year with Jonathan Taylor, with Marlon Mack, with all those guys, and kind of like what we saw in Los Angeles with the Rams and Darrell Henderson and Malcolm Brown, and it eventually emerged to be Cam Akers, meaning that I believe early on we are going to be seeing a running back by committee system in Green Bay, and unless they don't bring back Jamal Williams to me, there is no way that A.J. Dillon just completely, in my opinion, takes a stranglehold in the offseason. I think we're going to see it take a couple of games, like maybe a couple of weeks. I'm not talking like, hey, it's going to take the whole season, and if you draft A.J. Dillon, you're going to be pissed off because you drafted him in like the fourth round, in my opinion, probably where he's going to end up going, maybe even higher slightly, and then you end up being pissed because he's not starting. Jamal Williams is taking away too much. I think eventually A.J. Dillon will be the guy in that backfield, kind of like with the Rams, like I said, because we saw early on they're kind of running this spit roast backfield where one guy's getting it, then they give it to the next guy, and then Cam Akers was kind of just sitting in the corner on the couch behind me just cranking off while he was just being, he got cucked pretty much by uh, Darrell Henderson and Malcolm Brown, but I feel like we are going to see Mr. A.J. Dillon overcome that. To assess kind of what A.J. Dillon can do, we can look at the rookie year in his NFL season, obviously, which was last year. But to me, that does not need to be the biggest part of the video. The biggest part to me has to be discussing A.J. Dillon's collegiate career at Boston College, in which he played in three years at BC, which led him to become the 62nd pick in the second round of the 2020 NFL Drafts at the young, ripe age of 22. He has been in college from 2017 all the way until 2019. Obviously, those are his three years. At the age of 19, as a freshman at BC, he rushed, uh, th he played in 13 game, rushed 300 times for 1,500 rushing yards and 14 touchdowns. You heard that correctly. Motherfucker, his freshman year, rushed 300 times for 1,589 yards 
5.3 yards per carry and 14 total touchdowns. And he did this all with no receptions and no receiving yards, which I'm going to be talking about a little bit later as to why I feel like Jamal Williams, even obviously in every backfield we have, there's going to be relievers, right? Christian McCaffrey isn't in the whole fucking game. Saquon Barkley isn't in the whole fucking game, and they are considered to be workhorse running backs. And while I think Mr. A.J. Dillon is going to be busting through for fantasy football and play pretty well, I still think Jamal Williams is going to see a decent amount of receiving opportunity in this backfield. But again, that should not necessarily hamper A.J. Dillon being a great fantasy football running back. In 2018, his sophomore season at the age of 20, he played in 10 game, rushed the rock 227 times for 1,108 rushing yards, 4.9 yards per carry, 11 total touchdowns. But this year, he ended up getting some receptions. He had 13 targets, racked in eight catches for 41 receiving yards in that season. And then his junior season, the final season he played at Boston College at the age of 21, he played 12 games, 318 rushes for 1,685 rushing yards, 5.3 yards per carry, 15 total touchdowns with 13 receptions on 18 targets for 195 receiving yards. So, We can see he had a very good career in college at Boston College. Now, I'm not telling you guys that when you look at these numbers from college, you don't necessarily think, holy shit, this guy ran for 1,500 yards. He's the second coming of this guy or that guy. But what you can take from it is that this guy has the potential to be a fucking workhorse when you rush the ball 300 times, 227 times, and 318 times in your collegiate career at Boston College. That just shows me that this guy is going to be able to take a NFL level workload of carries when you're looking at these stats it should be clear that again like I said earlier Williams will be behind him catching passes since he never did it in college unless we see some type of apparition come down and bless AJ Dillon with some receiving abilities that maybe he could develop in the offseason or 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 we just see him you know he was he already could do that and he just wasn't getting the receptions or targets in college which is obviously potential, but when you think about it, you're like, hey, this is college. If the guy can catch the ball, you're going to fucking dump it off to him if he's the best guy on your team. So I have a feeling that A.J. Dillon doesn't necessarily have that great skill set when it comes to the receiving game. So now we can take that little bit of time to discuss his NFL career, his one year career as a rookie in the NFL. He ended up playing in nine games last season, but honestly didn't really do all that much aside from one game. Why is that? You may ask. It's because he wasn't given much of a chance because Aaron Jones was ahead of ahead of him. Aaron Jones, the guy who's rushing for a million yards and the guy they ended up letting go. So in this game where AJ Dillon went absolutely ham bony was week 16 versus the Tennessee Titans in that snow game and the Packers won 40 to 10. So that's why AJ Dillon got in. He had a 58.1% snap share in that game and rushed the rock 21 total times. Four of those were in the red zone as well as getting 10 receiving routes and catching his one solo target for 129 total yards that is rushing and receiving and he ended up scoring two total touchdowns. It was an excellent game as he ranked sixth at the running back position on that week and absolutely no one fucking had him in that game because everyone thought the Titans would keep this game close no one saw oh this screams blowout but the whole Green Bay Packers team laid the Titans on the table and raw dogged them relentlessly until the game ended it was a brutal fucking uh of that defense and it was great to see obviously AJ Dillon pull out a game like that but he certainly did not pull out of the Tennessee Titans defense if you catch my drift so now, with all of that in your brain, do does anyone think there's a way that Jamal Williams is the guy? Because I very much see no way that a, that A.J. Dillon, the guy with these fucking quads built out of like a Greek god, etched those out, okay? He is that built. He's built different, and he's very good at rushing the rock. So... I don't think Jamal Williams will be ahead of him. I don't think there's a way that, hey, they start off with the double-headed backfield type deal where they're both getting some rushes, both getting some pass-catching opportunities, where Jamal Williams is going to outshine A.J. Dillon. To me, there's no way that happens. According to Player Profiler, his 40-yard dash is a 4.53, ranking 70th percentile at the running back position, 117.3 speed score, 97th at the running back position, 97th uh, in the running back percentage or percentile, with 135 in the burst score, 97th. So very good. And 74th percentile in bench press with 23. So this guy is an athletic freak, like I said. And I really feel as though there's no way Williams can pass him up. 
So, don't overthink it. Unless they, for some reason, draft like Travis Etienne or Najee Harris, don't worry about A.J. Dillon because he's going to be good. There's a reason they drafted him in the second round last year, and there's a reason why they let go of Aaron Jones. Why is that? Because they don't want to pay him the money obviously, and also because they believe A.J. Dillon can be that guy. I still think Jamal Williams will be getting receiving opportunity, but that will not diminish A.J. Dillon's worth in the 2021 fantasy football season. If you're wondering, hey, Nick, what do I do with A.J. Dillon in Dynasty? Obviously, you do nothing. If you got him, maybe you can trade him super high, but I'm probably keeping him, and if you're trying to trade for him, you're going to have to pay the goddamn king's ransom. You're going to have to go ahead and take out a job stripping on the weekend to go ahead and pay enough money to get A.J. Dillon from whoever has him in your Dynasty Fantasy Football League. So let me know down below in the comments what you guys think about A.J. Dillon. Do you think I'm being a dumbass talking about how much I love A.J. Dillon, or do you guys think that you are aboard the A.J. Dillon train with me? Choo-choo. So if you guys did enjoy again, Please make sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope you guys did have a great time. Uh, probably going to be discussing maybe tomorrow we might be doing tag recap, like franchise tag recap. But, you know, the the exuberance around that is probably going to be gone by tomorrow. So we'll probably just keep doing fantasy content till next week, I believe, is when we see the legal tampering period when guys are going to start moving. Aaron Jones going to find his new team. Juju Smith-Schuster might find a new team. It's going to be a very fun week. Obviously, last year, the most fun day. I don't even remember when it was, but when Cam Newton got signed, the internet fucking exploded, like when Kim Kardashian's nudes got leaked on Twitter. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Again, I love you guys deep down in my heart. Thank you guys so much. And AJ Dillon will love you, or you will love AJ Dillon if you draft him and you win your 2021 Fantasy Football League. So thank you guys for watching again. I love you all. As always, guys, stay safe. Kaboom!